the deep dark, home to one of Minecraft's most fiercest enemies. For within these ancient cities lies the Warden, a monster capable of destroying a player with a sonically charged shriek in a single hit. How can anyone hope to withstand this sort of foe? And better yet, how can one cheese the fight against the Warden? So on today's Handicraft Corner, that's what we're going to find out. In order to cheese the Warden fight, you need a surprisingly low amount of objects. A bow, plenty of arrows, and building blocks is really all you need. To be safe, I would recommend a Totem of Undying as well as some food source and some night vision potions just to make sure you can see. Armor doesn't really help against the Warden, but it may help against other mobs that may be in this dark area with you. And of course, golden apples for the regeneration effect. If the sonically charged shriek does hit you, you can regen with those. But I'm not going to be using that, and especially not uh, melee weapons, because the Warden is at its most dangerous when you're up close. So before we get into it, a couple facts about Wardens that you should know is it takes them about 6.7 seconds to spawn in after a Shrieker alerts the Warden to your presence. So as long as you're sneaking around, you should be fine. And then after the Warden is summoned, it will take about six seconds before it can attack you, giving you plenty of time to set up the cheese. In addition, they have approximately 15 blocks of horizontal range with their shriek attack and 20 blocks of vertical range. So make sure to keep your distance and keep that bow handy. Let's cheese the warden. So I'm gonna chug a night vision potion so we can see slightly better in this ancient city. And I'm going to head on over to a place where I see a Shrieker, which there are plenty to choose from, but I want to get somewhere next to one of the walls of the ancient city here. Cause the fewer blocks I have to place, the better chance I have of cheesing this warden. Ah, perfect, right here. So there's a Shrieker in this wall here, and there's a sensor right next to it. Now, I'm gonna start making some building block walls around this particular area. Cause if I can wall off the area in which the Warden spawns, then the Warden will not be able to leave this square. So let's test it out by making some noise next to this sensor here. Okay. There he is up there. He's on the top. Not an ideal location. Not an ideal location at all. However, hope is not all lost. Aha! So now that we got him on this side of the wall, we can block him in here. He's still just trying to sniff us out, but this is okay. We're okay for now. Up. Okay, so that didn't work out the way I planned. It never does. That's okay. This one might be our best bet. Because we need a good six seconds, and we need that warden to spawn in somewhere close to us. And the fewer places we give it to run away, the better. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a little perimeter of wool. Okay, time to trigger the trap. There he is. And this is perfect. Because we actually got the warden trapped 
in our little circle here. So all I have to do is get 15 blocks away and then start shooting him with a bow. Now, I'm using spectral arrows so you can see where the warden is. You can use whatever arrows you want. You can even use an enchanted bow. So we can just fire as many arrows as it takes to take out the warden. And as long as I stay 15 blocks away, the warden will not be able to do anything against me. And there you have it. There's the catalyst. So if your friends don't find you captivating, they should at least find you crafty. Now, if you'd excuse me, I gotta go spread some skulk. Uh-oh. Nice warden. Don't eat my... <laughs> hey, dear. Hi, dear. Ho, oh, dear. Welcome, everybody, to another Minecraft episode on the Project Hydra server. My name is Fandoman, and it is a pleasure to have you all aboard. Today, I am going to finally do something that I've been putting off for many, many episodes. I have in my inventory four shulker boxes full of ore that I have yet to fortune up and see how much resources that actually yields me. So I'm going to make a giant tower and mine it all down and see what I get and maybe uh, repair some tools in the process. I suppose you guys are probably wondering, just where did I get all of this ore? Well, you know my cave project. Had to uh, hollow it out with something, right? Uh, yes, these ores right here, minus uh, a couple nether stuff at the top, uh, all this was taken from the cave. Four shulker boxes worth of ore and uh, let's see if we can repair all of our tools and uh, how many levels we can get. Oh boy. How do I get back up there? Here. <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna fly. Well, that was fun. I had the two stacks of ore on this platform here, and anything that accidentally fell off the side fell in this water stream and was carried all the way into this chest. And, uh, with those two tall stacks of ore blocks, we managed to fill over two shulkers of resources. And that's including them compacted into block form, meaning they are nine times more than the individual ore pieces. So look at all this. There's this shulker box, and we got this one entirely filled of copper, and then here's the extra bits after that. I mean, just copper alone. A full shulker of copper blocks. 
just from my cave. That was so amazing. Now, I suppose you're wondering, what am I going to do with these resources? Well, all the resources that I've either grinded or stockpiled or even were donated by other members of our server. In fact, I tried to cut down on everything being thrown away as well in our recycling center right here. Oh, by the way, have you ever seen somebody put in a whole lot of effort on a project and then just throw away like two hours of work into the garbage because they could? Me neither. I will be using those resources um, at the end of the season on some of what I would say is actually my biggest project in history. I have a large project that will probably take me a really long time to not just like gather up a bunch of resources, but also take them out of the recycle center and all corners of this world. But it will also take me a long time to build, to time lapse, to edit, all that good stuff. And we'll just have to wait a couple more episodes until we get to that point, because that's coming up. In the meantime, we are going to turn our attention to our Rattlin tree. And of course, in the Rattlin tree, we have this little lovely region down there. So let's call our elevator. Please come up. Yes, okay, it's coming. And while we wait for the elevator to come up, here's a word from our sponsor. Have you ever gone mining and your pickaxe breaks just as you're about to get to the ore? Have you ever been digging straight down and end up in a pool of lava? Have you ever tried enchanting and ended up just a few XP short? Well, that's tough, and so is this tough. It's tough. That's the joke. Welcome back, everybody, to the Ratlin Cave, the Ratlin Village, with our Ratlin Mill, and we are just coming down. Hello, Llama. We are going to build something over in the everywhere general direction, because it is time to flood the Ratlin Cave and spruce it up a little bit, give it a bit of life. And the best thing I can think of to give life to a build is water. At least where I come from. Whoop. I forgot my staff can do that. <laughs> I just spread a bunch of moss. Okay, I'm gonna need to recharge my staff. And then we are gonna go into a time lapse and flood this cave with uh, a body of water. I'm thinking, hmm, what twists and bends and goes in all sorts of directions. A river. A river does that. Time lapse time. Okay, wait a minute. Hold everything. Hold everything. I saw something funny. When I was digging this out, I saw part of the wall open. And I think one of my animals went inside there. I saw something like over here. Yeah, the, I hear a fox and a frog behind this wall. Whoa. Hey guys, who put this here? Hello, is there anything underneath here? Somebody put a secret meeting room inside my cave. And they stole my pets. How do I get out? It's gotta be a skulk sensor or something somewhere. Aha! Run! Everybody out! Everybody out! You too, frog. How is this made? Uh-huh. It's trapdoors. Yep, 
Waterlogged skulk sensor. Wait a minute. Somebody's been watching my videos. <laughs> well done. What exactly is this supposed to observe? Oh. Scaffolding does a block update when the thing beneath it. Oh, I would like to leave, please. Thank you. Well, that's enough of that distraction. Let's get back to the time lapse. Well, I'm happy with how this turned out. Look at it. There is so much more life into our village right now. I had to take some extra time and lower the floor by a whole block to fit the river in. Um, I needed a sense of depth with the water, and I really thought that making it two blocks deep was going to be good enough for that effect. Because otherwise, it's just like a little tide pool. And now that we got the two blocks deep, we're actually getting some uh, new creatures into the cave here in the form of these glow squid. And I think that's really cool because they're bright, they emit light, and they really help uh, add some vibrance to the deeper quarters uh, of the water. Uh, we also have some bridges and extra islands. And it is still kind of dark in here, and that's intentional because I wanted like a night sky effect, and uh, as a result, it makes the ground look a little dark. So let's uh, let's just take a little lantern here and uh, look at the details a little more closely here. So we have a cute little bridge here, um, some more berry bushes on this brand new island here. Uh, it allows us to connect the center over to our water mill over here, and you might remember this from last episode. And uh, another detail with the water mill is I added soul sand underneath uh, the wheels, so you can see some bubbles coming up in front of the wheels. And uh, I really like that kind of detail there. Over here on this island... We've connected this to the center island with a bridge, of course, and rummaging through the pathways, uh, we see some frogs. Uh, these orange ones are actually born here in the cave. Now that we've added water, the gray ones that were the originals uh, were able to lay eggs and hatch their tadpoles. And with so many slime around here, it is no wonder why there are so many frogs on this island now. And uh, I, I love to see it. Uh, the way over to our uh, stranger villager house is through here. Uh, if you remember in uh, Echoes of the Eye, there is a secret little cave here. Spoiler warning, of course. Uh, that allows you to traverse the island to the house. And it pops up right here. And there's a llama taking a little swim. Let's check up on our uh, stranger villagers and see how they are doing. And there's three of them now. Okay, I also added this bridge to connect these islands together. And we can now go in. I've opened up the doors so you can walk all the way through. And 
see each and every building around here and of course the center circle which has a spiral staircase that goes all the way down to a secret door that may or may not lead to somewhere in the future. And that is the village here in the Ratlin Cave. As you can see behind me, there is a little bit of glowiness in between my antlers. And over there, I have uh, put torches in place. Those are to mark the area in which I'm going to be expanding that next episode. Who put that skeleton there? How'd you get up there? What are the spawn levels? Oh. <laughs> right on top of the thing. Okay. Do I have some glow lichen? Yes, I do. Okay. Careful not to get hit. Stab it. Aha. Okay. Now we got our glow lichen here. Oh, don't. There we go. That was a close call. Oh, he got me. Got him. Okay. That was a close one. Where was I? Ah, yes. So, I was thinking about adding a dynamic lighting system to the cave. The glow squids gave me an excellent idea with how they light up the landscape around them as they swim across the river. I almost blanked on that. As they swim across the river. And I was wondering if I could do something similar with the ceiling. The floating candles do a good job, as well as the twinkliness of the skulk block, but, like, how could I get something that moves around just like the glow squid does? And I'm thinking, alleys, because if you give them, like, a torch or lantern, they'll hold it, and they'll continue flying around. So what happens if I were to give a bunch of torches to alleys and just let them loose here in the cave? Let's head back up to the surface and see if we can track down some LAs. Okay, so I think th there is a storehouse of LAs over here. Yep, in uh, Chairman and Danny's little building here. Uh, they were actually doing, uh, during one of Bonded's live streams, we, uh, Kind of threw a party here. One of these was the original. Francis! Francis was the original one. We kept feeding these uh, amethyst crystals. And we ended up with a lot of alleys here. If I give you a torch, yeah, you'll just fly around holding whatever you give them, I guess. Real question is how do I get them into the tree? I think I'm actually going to give them. Uh, soul torches just because the blue will fit the environment of the cave a little better can I take that back thank you you can have this one and I wonder uh, if they'll f start following me if I uh, break this Ooh, get the leads is anyone going to follow me what are you all doing up here yeah how, how many of these guys is gonna be necessary for the uh, experiment to work am I at my lead limit Okay, let's let's try this many to start. Okay. All leads through the door. I think I got more than just the leads. Oh boy, it seems like every every one I gave a torch to is going to follow me now. Some of them even seem to be uh, teleporting to me, which is great. If I start flying, are they going to be able to keep up? Or is the lead going to break? Oh, no! The lead broke. But they seem to be following anyway. So if I fly over here... Let's just land on this tree make sure they're all coming. Yep. Yep. Oh, this is wonderful. They love me. Now we go up to our balcony. Ah, uh, yes. Come on in, everyone. This is where we're going to live 
Let's see if they'll follow me down the tunnel. Here we go. Are they gonna flood in? Yes. Saw a couple. Couple more. Good, good, good. Yes. This is great. You see the glow squid down there, and then with the LAs on the ceiling. Uh, this, this is this is a great effect. Look at that one just wandering around. We have LAs in the village, and the they'll fly around and light up everything. It's gonna be great. I'm afraid to find out what's gonna happen if I just like leave them in here. I hope I don't have to like tie him to the roof or something. Unfortunately, this is the end of the episode. I hope you guys really enjoyed watching today. I sure had a lot of fun making this episode today. And uh, we will be expanding the... Oh, hi guys. We will be expanding the uh, Ratlin Cave with a channel. And that is going to go behind the mill there. Um, but yeah, we have our river next to the mill, in the village, in the cave. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Whee. Well, by that mill there was a river, a rare river, and a rattling river, and the river by the mill, and the mill, and the village, and the village, and the cave, and the cave, and the well, and the well, and the room, and the room, and the house, and the house, and the nest, and the nest, and the leaf, leaf, and the twig, and the twig, and the branch, and the branch, and the limb, and the limb, and the bough, and the bough, and the tree, and the tree, and the hole, and the hole, and the bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh, oh, row the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh, rare bog, and a rattling bog, and the bog down in the valley, oh.